Well, hello there. It's Greggy Soriano. I wanted to start this off by sincerely apologizing for not posting a video last Thursday. I am so, 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 so sorry. I seriously, I feel like a parent that just left his kid after school and forgot to pick him up. And I totally did that to you guys. And I obviously have PTSD from that. But any hoodle, yeah, I promise not to do it again ever, ever, ever again. Well, I'll try my darndest not to do it ever again. I have something special in store that hopefully it makes up for it. And also at the end of this video, I have another special surprise for you that I can't wait to tell you about. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to make a fall cake with a jewel toned color palette. And I'm also going to show you guys how to make realistic looking gemstones out of sugar. We're also going to talk our cake with a cake pop croquembouche and you're probably sitting there thinking Greggy what's a cake pop croquembouche I don't want to see your croquembouche well you do want to see this croquembouche a croquembouche is a classic French wedding cake that is usually made out of cream puffs filled with chanty cream and it has spun sugar around it and it's shaped like a Christmas tree but you guys don't mistake it for a Christmas tree it is not a Christmas tree it is a croquembouche it's a wedding cake I wanted to spruce up the old version of a croquembouche because it's kind of drab and it's brown and it's just a bunch of cream puffs towered on top of each other and then there's sponge sugar around it, which is good, but I want to make it good and better. You guys are going to learn all these tips and tricks right here today on Greggy's Digest. First, I'm starting off by frosting my cake in a gradient effect, and I made a red that's kind of like on the ruby red-ish side, and I mixed a little bit of super red with a teeny itty bitty smidge of black into it. And right now I'm just swiping the cake of my base with my orchidy aubergine colored purple, and I'm just swiping it across and creating my final coat to create a beautiful gradient effect. And it doesn't have to be super perfect or super smooth either, it just has to be somewhat smooth because we're going to place the jewels that are super clear and it'll shine through and you'll have a nuance of this gradient effect that will come through the jewels. To make this orchid-like mauve color, all I did was got some violet and a smidge of black into it. And literally, it's just a little bit of a dot to make that color. Set this cake to the side in the fridge to chill. Right now, I'm making some cake pops or cake truffles with some leftover strawberry cake and vanilla cake. And I'm just adding some buttercream to it and creating some balls to make my cake truffles. If you don't know how to make a cake pop, who are ya? Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, you've been living under a rock. Seriously, it's super easy. All you have to do is mix your cake with some buttercream. Or another tip and trick I like to do is get some flavored creamers and it instantly flavors it and it's delicious. So while I'm setting those aside to chill, I'm gonna start to make. I did not just use the word finna. Ew. I'm going to start making my candy mixture for my sugar jewels. I'm doubling up this recipe because I need a lot of jewels to cover this cake and all you need is two cups of sugar and one cup of water and one cup of caro syrup or light corn syrup and a smidge of salt. And here is a digital thermometer which you should always have if you want to be a pro baker and you should have a candy thermometer as well but I like this kind of thermometer just because I like to read things digitally. If you noticed, I started brushing the sides of the pan with a silicone brush, that red silicone brush that I had. You always need to set aside some water and a silicone brush because you do not want any debris to come off the sides into your mixture because that'll totally screw up your candy mixture. So make sure the sides are always clean and don't stir it at all. 
The temperature we're trying to reach is 295 degrees Fahrenheit or 146 degree centigrade. 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 Why do I not know that word right now? Centigrade. Centigrade? Whatever, you know what I mean. We don't use that letter in our country. We use the F. Right here, I prepared my candy mold with some grease, and I just wiped it off because you don't want too much grease. And right now, I'm adding some flavoring. You can use any candy flavoring you'd like. Just don't color it because you want it to be clear. As you continuously heat the sugar mixture up to create more sugar jewels, you'll notice that it'll get darker as it goes, and that's amazing because it creates an automatic ombre effect and it'll tart it'll tart it'll start to turn into an amber-ish color which turns out gorgeous if you only have one mold what you want to do is fill up one set of candy molds or is it just this one candy mold and you want to set it aside to allow it to harden up and then you want to make sure you just turn off your heat of the sugar mixture and then wait until it hardens up and then you want to reheat the sugar mixture again because if you just keep the heat on to it it's just going to be really dark caramel black and you're going to burn your sugar so you just turn it off and soften it again and pour your sugar continuously until you finish all of your sugar mixture did that make sense to you guys i hope so Now I'm spattering the back side of these jewels with a mixture of vodka and some gold luster dust. Now I'm gilding the same side with some edible gold leaf and I am just brushing it on with a dry brush and it automatically sticks on. You don't have to stick it on with anything. And you just want to strategically place beautiful pieces of gold leaf onto the back side of the jewels and I allowed it to cool and now it's nice and hard and I'm popping them out just like that. And look at these things. I feel like a rich man. If I were a rich man. If I had all the sugar jewels in the world. If I were a wealthy girl. Right here I melted some chocolate in a royal blue and a primary green and I'm mixing up some blue with the green to make a teal color and I want a jewel colored jewel toned teal. I want it to be nice, bold, and beautiful. Right now I'm making some chocolate embellishments and you kind of want the perfect smooth finger. That's why I adjusted my gloves. And you want them in different sizes so make different plops of sizes of your chocolate and make a beautiful swipe motion. You want beautiful movement and texture. And right now I'm just adding a little bit more fans because I need some bigger pieces to go in the middle. And set these little bibbas to the side to harden up. Right now I'm about to dip my little bola bolas, aka cake truffles, aka cake pops, and I have these tines that I love to dip my chocolate with. And what you do is when you dip it, you want a smooth side, so you want to 
plop it in there and then you want to scoop it up to make a smooth top. And what I'm doing right now is I'm actually not tapping it on the side of the cup of chocolate. I'm pouncing it right onto the top of the mass of chocolate inside the cup. And what that does, it, it creates a less of a foot or a puddle underneath your chocolate truffle or your cake pop. And you just want to avoid just a huge chunk or puddle on the bottom of your truffle. And whenever you make real truffles or anything you dip, that's a good tip on how to not make huge chunky truffles. So just remember, pounce it. Pounce away. So right now I'm piling on my croquembouche and what I'm using to adhere it is white chocolate and the inside is actually a styrofoam cone which I covered in plastic wrap and foil and of course I washed it before and I covered it in white chocolate and right now I'm adding my beautiful jewel embellishments onto the side of the cake and you want just a nuance of that gradient frosting to shine through which it is This part takes quite a while and I'm just about done and it fits perfectly on the last row and here's my last one. Ready, set, voila! And you want to push it straight in to remove all of the air bubbles and there you have it. Right now I'm creating a bow with some teal 50-50 fondant and gum paste. And I'm creating a log to create my tails for my bow. And I have this amazing tool, which I love. And it creates beautiful, even strips for bows. And adhering with water and creating a little dimple on the edges of each bow. Just like that. And I'm stuffing it to create some voluminous bows. And right now I'm adhering my tails and I'm creating some movement and a little bit of ruffle so that it looks more realistic. And right now I'm adhering my left bow loop. And you want to take your time and be very delicate with it because it could easily ruin your croquembouche and cake pops will roll everywhere. So you really want to make sure you take your time and allow it to set onto your croquembouche. And here are my chocolate fans. I also made some gray ones as well. And just one swipe motion with my finger. And right now I'm about to attach all of my chocolate fans on. And I have really warm fingers, but it kind of has an advantage to it because it makes little imperfections and holes inside of it, which I love. It just gives it a bit more texture and character and you want to strategically place your chocolate fans in a gradient shape and you want a bit more heavy in the middle and you want to go lighter and more thinner towards the ends. And you want to evenly distribute the hardness and softness and the color and I've added a macaron in the middle with the number one, two, three, or four plain round tip, start piping beads in a gradient effect as well. And you want to have large ones and really itty bitty tiny beads. And you want to distribute that golden jewel yellow color onto your croquembouche.
And now I'm adding some red meringue like embellishments to our little centerpiece here. And finally, a number four tip in our aubergine orchid color. And I'm just finishing it off just like that. Now you're gonna choose some trim with me for our cake drum. Right here is our raspberry-ish color that will match perfectly. And a teal ribbon and this golden yellow or a silver to go with the chocolate bands. Which one should I pick? Silver, teal, golden yellow, or the raspberry? I picked the golden yellow just to let it pop out a little bit more just so that it doesn't look too dark. And there you have it, our jewel-toned cake pop croquembouche cake. Work! Thank you guys so, so much for watching. It seriously means everything to me. And I told you guys I have a special surprise up my sleeves. Nope, it's not there, but it's right here. I'm about to tell you about it. I wanted to announce, drum roll please. I can't really roll my tongue. Officially launched Cake Earth Crate by Greggy Soriano, which is a subscription box company that sends you guys some of my favorite things, which are like my supplies that I just can't live without, and some of my recipes and fun DIY projects every season, and cute things like my color palettes, and very useful things like my paint palettes and my watercolor palettes, and things like that. And I'm also going to throw in some of my things that I'm obsessed with that have nothing to do with cake, like my favorite candies and stuff like that. Just head on over to greggysoriano.com and right here in this little box is a special little secret coupon code for you guys to get your first box with. You guys are gonna save a little bit of money and you guys are gonna get some fun stuff because I like making fun little presents for people. By purchasing a Cake Earth Crate subscription, you guys are seriously helping me keep this channel alive. You're keeping it ad free and you're helping me develop bigger and better projects that I can produce all the designs that I've come up with that I really, really, really want to show you because they're crazy amazing and they're ridiculous and I really want to show you guys everything that I have in store for you. And so go ahead and go to greggysoriano.com. It would be greatly appreciated. And if you haven't already, subscribe and like and share my videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye! Click on the cute little bumblebee to subscribe, click on the video to view my last episode on the right, and visit my website at www.greggysoriano.com. Oh, and follow me on social media in the description links down below. Thanks!